Tom Ron, Phil and Charles, I think it's safe to say this is a bigger rivalry for Texas Tech than it is for Texas, but you can't tell Longhorn quarterback Colt McCoy that. He grew up about 180 miles from Lubbock, used to come to games here, and he has been on quite a journey since that time, and it's been a journey that's been quite successful the last couple of weeks. It really has, and everyone's waiting for this redshirt freshman to kind of hit the wall and have a tough game, but thus far, you take away Ohio State early, he's played quite well, 70% passer. In the, and during this win streak that Texas is on right now, 16 touchdowns, only two interceptions since the Ohio State game. And he's gained the respect of his teammates, those guys in the huddle. And that was a tough thing to do after Vince Young last year. But he has done it. And tonight, he must control his emotions. As you mentioned, he's from near here, and he knows all these guys from Texas Tech. He must play within himself this evening. Well, one of the guys he knows from Texas Tech is their quarterback, Graham Harrell, who, after back-to-back -back losses, underwent a lot of criticism. But nothing that a six-touchdown win over Iowa State wouldn't cure. Criticism? What criticism? <laughs> no oh, criticism. yeah, that was a couple of games ago when he was struggling against Colorado and against Missouri. In those ball games, he threw four touchdown passes but had a combined nine turnovers against Iowa State. Six touchdown passes, zero turnovers. That will quell all the criticism, and he doesn't have to look over his shoulder now. He is their guy, but he will need some help from his defense tonight. Only 11 turnovers forced all year long for Texas Tech. They need to force at least four tonight to give their offense a chance. Now, Mac Brown is 35-3 and three against teams within the state of Texas. His last loss came in 2002, right here in Lubbock against Texas Tech. Now let's send it back to our studios in Atlanta. Front row on the visiting sideline by the tunnel where it's important to cheer for Texas Tech, but even more important to cheer Texas. All right, thank you very much, Craig. Mac Brown, the 2005 National Coach of the Year, the Big 12 Coach of the Year. He's 66 and five versus unranked opponents, trying to add a little bit of that tonight. And his counterpart, of course, is uh, Mike Leach. Already has a law degree from Pepperdine, so he can fall back on something if this coaching thing doesn't work out. <laughs> He's the first coach to take uh, his first six teams to bowls. Done a great job. Hunter Lawrence kicks it away for Texas. They won the toss. They have deferred. Shannon Woods from about the eight. Gets up over the 20, up to about the 23-yard line. That's where Texas Tech will get underway. Let's take a look at Texas Tech's offense. They are the number three passing offense in the country. Graham Harrell, he's learning to spread the ball around, especially last week. Nine receivers caught passes against Iowa State. Jones. And in this offense, when it's clicking the way that they expect, that's what you get. Nine different guys catching the ball. That means the ball's being spread around because it's based on reads, not trying to force it to a certain receiver. No quarterback controversy at Texas Tech, my friends. Now, despite Coach Leach almost mm -hmm. making one, he has let everyone know that this is his guy. First and 10, Shannon Woods in the backfield. And they try it on the ground with Woods, and he may actually lose a yard on the play. Let's take a look at our Red Lobster starting lineups. The Texas Tech offensive line. Brandon Jones, he's anchored this offensive line for the last couple of years at center. And in the skill positions, we just saw him. Shannon Woods at running back coming off his best game of the year against Iowa State. He's not only a pretty good runner, he also is a threat receiving. Second down and 11. They did lose a yard on the play. Harold, the quick out. Over the 25, up to the 27, a couple of penalty flags come flying in. Robert Johnson on the reception. Holding. Number eight, offense. Ten yards, previous spot. Second down. Joel Filani, the culprit. Claire Gaussman, our referee tonight. Our Red Lobster starting lineup, the Texas defense, number two in the country versus the run. They're going to try to keep people fresh. Brian Robinson, dogged by an ankle injury. He's one of the many DLs we're going to see tonight. Linebacker Scott Derry, he's the best story of the year on defense. Plays more snaps than any other linebacker for the Longhorns. And in the secondary, he's a good one. Aaron Ross, leading candidate for the Thorpe Award. He does things that coaches cannot coach, and they love him. Ball has moved back to the 15-yard line, second down and 18. You can see the penalties that uh, Texas Tech had, but last week they were dinged for plus 100. Harrell over the middle, pass caught up over the 30 to the 34-yard line. Jared Hicks, his 17th reception of the year. 
What's nice about this is that they get their big horse into the game early, Jared Hicks, and he's running it against Texas's best defender in the secondary so far this year, Aaron Ross. A deep slant in route, perfectly thrown ball, and Jared Hicks is off and, off and running night. 19 yards on the pickup. That's a very important point of this football game is that Graham Harrell didn't lock on to him. He went through his reads and then found him. He's going to try it again. Here comes the pressure from the backside. Steps up into the pocket, complete up to the 43 yard line. Graham Harrell just showing a lot of patience despite a lot of pressure. What I like about this play is how Graham Harrell uses his eyes and his feet to continue to keep the play alive and complete it downfield. Many people focus on his so-called lack of mobility, but you don't have to take off and run into the secondary every time. It's being able to create passing lanes for yourself and for your team. That's exactly what Graham Harrell just did. And that sets up a second down and one from the 43-yard line. Opening drive for Texas Tech. Woods, right side, tries to dip that left shoulder in. Doesn't get the first down. That'll bring up a third down and short. Let's take a look at tonight's Orbit's fast and easy keys to the game. First of up, Texas Tech. Well, they must accentuate the positive. They must win the plus-minus turnover battle by at least three to win, in my estimation, or minus five on the year. Stand-up guy. They need to keep Graham Harrell upright in the pocket. In their losses, he's been sacked nine times out of their 12 all year. And go forth with alacrity. That's enthusiasm. Give this crowd a reason to stay with this ball club. They're hopped up. They want to keep them that way. Somebody's been reading the Reader's Digest word. <laughs> Third down and two. Harrell into the flat, a big hit, incomplete pass at the 45-yard line. That was a major hit, and that'll bring up a fourth down and two. And it brings up a big decision early for Mike Leach, because you know he likes to go for it here. But what a great play by Aaron Ross. This is exactly what Texas wants to do. They know that Texas Tech is going to throw. They know they're going to complete passes, but they want to make the receivers pay every time they catch the ball. That's what Aaron Ross just did. And Danny Amendola took quite a hit. Now they had a second down and one, couldn't convert on the run. And they're going to go for it. This is the gambling that Matt Brown says, if Leach gambles, I'm probably going to gamble. Yeah, this is not unusual if you've ever watched Texas Tech play. This is more the norm. If he punted, it'd be a surprise. 57% on fourth down this year. Harold drops back into the shotgun. See if he's trying to draw off sides here. He looks his left, locking onto a receiver, going deep, has a man, Hicks, caught at the 30-yard line. this pass protection for Graham Harrell because this is a deep route and no one pressures him gives him plenty of time to find Jared Hicks in front of number 26 Marcus Griffin they just needed about a yard they got plenty more on that play 27 yards on the pickup first and 10 from the 31 good opening drive for the Red Raiders quick looking pass Pop inside the 20 down to the 18 yard line Johnson again his third reception of the ball game against Missouri and Colorado Texas Tech did not score any points in the first quarter they lost against Iowa State they came back and did hang touchdowns on the first quarter major difference for their offense yeah they scored the first two times they touched the football 14 points right out of the gate and they are allowing this crowd to continue to stay in this ball game from the 18 first and 10 step it off the woods he gets a block looks inside of the 10 five touchdown Texas Tech you can draw it up better but it won't be as beautiful <laughs> as it is in execution Look at that out there, number 63, Manuel Ramirez, 78, Gabe Hall, number 73, Brandon Jones didn't even have anyone to block. The play broke, broke so open. Terrific opening drive for the Red Raiders. 18-yard touchdown pass completes it. Malika's extra point is perfect. He's never missed one here at Texas Tech. 
Shannon Woods, his second touchdown reception. Graham Harrell throws touchdown pass number 26. Graham Harrell, the sophomore from Ennis, Texas, completing 68% of his pass passes on the year. Throws the touchdown to Shannon Woods. And the Red Raiders leading the Longhorns 7-0. Glad you're with us tonight. Keith Tugood set to kick it away. Pretty good numbers there for Graham Harrell, huh? Look at that getting out of the Not game, bad. fourth in NCAA total offense. And what a much better reception for him tonight than the last time we were here when there was a little booing in the stands in the Missouri game from the interceptions. That kick's going to go into the end zone by two good. He is good at doing that. Let's go back to the touchdown again. Screen pass to the back, Shannon Woods, but look at the posse out in front. Gabe Hall takes out Scott Derry, 33. Manuel Ramirez, 63. Brandon Jones gets to lead the lead the convoy into the end zone. Well designed, even better execution from Texas Tech. Uh, he had a pretty good tutor in Torian Henderson, Shannon Woods did. Yeah, if you're going to emulate someone yeah. at the F-back position, as they call it, he's the guy. Juan Cosby now goes wide to the left. Texas will open up in the shotgun. We'll probably see a little eye formation also tonight from the Longhorns. Little play action, dumping it off in the flat up to the 30-yard line. Pass is complete. Jordan Shipley, the sophomore from Burnett, Texas. Colt McCoy, eight straight games with a touchdown pass. He's not had a bad game yet. Is this Texas offense fourth in the NCAA in points? And Mac Brown says a lot of freshman quarterbacks hit that wall. He hasn't done it yet, Charles. Yeah, so far he still sees the same bounce and enthusiasm from him, and he's hoping that that continues, obviously. This time he rolls, throws across his body, passes complete over the 40-yard line. Juan Cosby gets up to the 50-yard line. Our Red Lobster starting lineup for the Texas offensive line. Casey Stutter, two-time Big 12 player. Crucial fumble recovery versus Nebraska last week. He's a hustler out there. In the skill position, Selvin Young, he's the most complete running back. Of course, we're also going to see Jamal Charles as they pack a one-two punch running the football. They mark it at the 47, first and 10 for the Longhorns. Cosby. Makes a nice move inside, gets into Red Raider territory down to the 46-yard line. The Red Lobster starting lineup for this Texas Tech defense. First of the Big 12 versus the pass on the line. Keonta Dawson, legitimate NFL talent, having an outstanding year. Linebackers Kellen Tillman, the senior out of Plano, Texas, second leading tackler at that spot. In the secondary, Darcel McBath, just a sophomore. Coaches say he is a pleasant surprise. Pickup of seven and second and three. And again, they go to the air. Colt McCoy out in the flat to Cosby. Got the first down, takes a couple of whacks. But he has the first down at the 41-yard line. And to finish what we were talking about with Colt McCoy in terms of hitting the wall and being a young freshman, most of it comes from the mental side of the game. Preparing for a new set of defenses each week. Absorbing more information. It wears you down as a youngster because don't forget, they're still going to class every day. They're still trying to find their way around campus. Thus far, that has not happened with Cole McCoy, and he's off the sharp in this first drive. On the ground with Young. Tries to bounce to the outside. Texas Tech corrals him right at the 40 yard line. Good job stringing it out by that Tech defense. Darcel McBath comes up limping on the play. He's going to come out of the ball game. And if I'm Texas and I see that right now, I might want to think about trying to find a pass into that zone. Because coming into the game right now is number 24, Lance Fuller. He's the backup. An old adage always says, test the backup as soon as he comes mm -hmm. into the game. Lance Let's see what he's got. Lance Fuller's brother, Cody, also played here at Texas Tech. Second and nine, they're looking. McCoy, he's dangerous when he runs, throws into the flat, passes complete at the 30-yard line to Quan Cosby. Our orbits fast and easy keys to the game. Let's take a look at the Texas Longhorns and Mac Brown. Well, I think that in this ball game, they want to establish a running game and run deep. They haven't had a 20-yard run or more since the Rice game. Control, they want to control their emotions, control the crowd, and control the football and keep Mike Leach's offense on the bench. And what will Mac what Brown wear for Halloween? His costume may be Mike Leach's alter ego. He may go for it more today with an uncertain kicking game and wanting to keep Texas Tech's offense on the bench. Leans forward into the 25-yard line. 
Pick up about five on the play. Jake Ratliff on the stop. Sophomore out of Lawton, Oklahoma, Lawton Ike High School. The alternate Sylvan Young and Jamal Charles. Yes, and when you talk about alternating, the Texas Tech defensive line is alternating on every play. We knew we'd get that type of rotation from Texas's defensive line. I'm seeing the same thing early in the game from Tech's defensive front. Every play, two or more guys rotate into the game. On second and five, Jamal Charles. He was stopped at about the 21-yard line. We see Texas run a lot out of the gun. There is a misconception that you can't run out of a shotgun formation. Yeah, everyone, because of the shotgun formation, a lot of your runs are sideways runs. You know, you're going to go side to side. But you can get, you, you know, you can turn them into high formation type runs by bringing an H back inside to lead as a fullback and then backing up your back and running it straight downhill, as people like to call it. But for Texas, they think their personnel fits running the football. Whoa. I think they're saying Texas Tech has the ball. I think they did. We never saw it come out. I saw the end. I saw them digging around. But, I, you know, because it was such a delayed call, I thought that it wasn't a call there. Well, that got the fans right up. Claire Gaussman ran out, and Mac Brown's probably wondering what the heck happened. Jamal Charles on the on the running play. See him go inside. There's the ball. There's the ball. He's tackled by Brock Stratton. He's on top of Stratton. He's not down. Oh, then the ball is kicked down by Lance Fuller. And now the pile. The, the, there's the pile. Looks like Antonio Huffman, 36, is on top of Jamal Charles. But because Jamal Charles never hit the ground, he's still alive. See, he's on top of Brock Stratton. Yeah. Still digging. And Lance Fuller's knee and and and, and shin bone knocks the ball free. And Mac has come out on the field. He wants to talk to the referee. Five fumbles in the last two games prior to this one. They lost only one of them. The ruling on the field is being challenged by Texas. See, the question I would ask if I'm Mac, when did you blow, when did you blow your whistle? Yeah. Uh, we're going to take a quick break looking at the fumble again. Will the challenge be upheld? We'll Welcome back to Lubbock where Texas Tech is up seven on Texas. Was this a fumble or not? Jamal Charles is on top of a Texas Tech defender when the ball pops free. See, it's out right there because it came off of this guy right there, Lance Fuller. After review, replay confirms the ball was fumbled along to Texas Tech. Let's go, to, let's go to Craig Sager quickly. Craig. Well, the Texas sidelines very confused about that call. The players came over after they gave Texas Tech the ball. They told Matt Brown that they thought the whistle had blown and they thought he was down. They also checked with their radio announcers and their coaches upstairs, and that's why he decided to go for the challenge. But as we know, when you make challenges in the Big 12, very rarely are they overturned. Yes. About 0 for 19 in the Big 12 right now, Craig. And, you know, from our perspective, he was on top of Brock Stratton. Right. Thus, he was not on the ground. And just happenstance with Lance Fuller's knee and shin bone, knocking the ball free. First turnover created of the night by Texas Tech. David Schaefer is coming to the ball game to join Shannon Woods in the backfield. Harold, here comes the blitz backside. Sees it, gets rid of it, pass is complete. Robert Johnson close to the 50. Pick up the 31 on the play. Outstanding patience by that man. Robert Johnson isolated on a linebacker. He's able to get right into the middle, right over the top of Scott Derry, number 33. And that's a battle Robert Johnson should win 99 times out of 100. Derry trying to keep him from crossing the field, but a nice fake by Johnson eludes Derry, and then he rambles deep into the secondary. Officially 32 yards. You can see he already has picked up four for 56. Harold coming off his career best six touchdown games versus Iowa State, picking up right where he left off. First and 10 from the 48. Has time, looking, throwing across his body, complete at the 40-yard line. Big hit on Jared Hicks, but he, nope, they're saying it's incomplete now. That's a pretty big hit by Michael Griffin. I have to say, too, this Texas secondary is a little bit dinged up, Charles. They are. Everyone's playing with some type of an ailment. Michael Griffin has a bad ankle. His brother Marcus has two bad ankles. Terrell Brown with a bad toe. Aaron Ross, a sprained wrist. It's a mash unit, but no one cares about that now. The game has started. They have to produce. Texas had six on the line. No penalty flag. Pass is complete down to the 42-yard line. 
Pick up about six on the play. Hicks on the reception again. Fans wanted an offside, not going to get it. One thing we're seeing, though, after that pickup of six, Charles, is something that's the M.O. when you play Texas Tech. They're going to make their catches. you got to punish them after they make the reception. Exactly right. That's what they want to do. Gene Chizik, Dwayne Aquina, the co-defensive coordinators of Texas, they want their secondary to come up and really lower the boom on these receivers, hoping that it pays dividends as the game goes on. Texas Tech facing third down, 0 for 1 early on. Quick look in. Pass is complete. Where are they going to spot it? One official has it down to the 38-yard line. L.A. Reed on the reception. They run him back. But it looks like that'll be good enough for a first down. Once again, we're seeing the uh, receivers getting punished. But this time, they got the first down, then driven back. Bottom line was L.A. Reed made the grab, and he caught it exactly at the first down marker. That's good route running and good timing between himself and his quarterback, Graham Harrell. A little more up-tempo right now with the no huddle for Texas Tech. They're trying to keep Texas' base defense on the field. Four-man rush. Harrell's got time. Wings it over the middle. Complete down to the 15-yard line. Danny Amendola. Amendola, he's the one in the middle of the three receivers, number 20 in red, runs downfield on a vertical route. Terrific, terrific ball by Graham Harrell. And right now, everything that Texas Tech needed to have happen coming into this game is occurring. They've got the one turnover you said they needed four. They've scored on their first drive, the crowd's into the game, they're driving again. First and 10 from the 15, Harrell again, this time miscommunication with his receiver. Looked like Jared Hicks went one way, the pass went the other way. We have to say, too, when you look at Texas Tech and you talk about their offense, you don't really have a playbook. You do, but mainly it's reads. That's a great case in point. Both players read something different. And Mike Leach tell, has told us that his playbook can be installed in three days of practice. What comes later are all the shifts, the motions, the alignments that you can change up and run the plays and make them look different. You can see the red zone offense 66% this year for Texas Tech. Second down and 10 from the 15. Here comes the rush. Caught inside the five down to the three yard line. Joel Filani. Pick up a 12. And what he also has are big physical receivers. Look at Joel Filani run through the freshman Dion Beasley after the catch for an additional three yards. Joel Filani's a strong receiver, making nice plays, weighs about 215 pounds. 11 of 14, throwing the football for Graham Harrell. Now he's got first and goal from the two. Not necessarily a rundown with Texas Tech's offense in the spread. They'll go over center. Looking for the fade route, throwing it up for grabs, and that was Texas Tech playing defense on that. Hicks tried to keep it away from Terrell Brown. That was well played by Terrell Brown, number five, the corner for Texas. Stayed into the body, in the framework of Jared Hicks, and sees the ball the whole way. Never has his head turned, so he's able to see it come right at him. And as you said, Jared Hicks had to play the defense yeah. at, the, on the, at that point to prevent an interception. You quarterbacks like that, didn't you? Uh, yes, yes, we do. <laughs> Second and goal from the two. Got a bunch formation over here. Watch for some type of a flood route to this side. Splits on the left side of the line, not that big. They give the Woods, he's hit immediately. May have even lost a yard back to the three yard line. Brings up a third down and goal. Inside of seven minutes here in quarter number one, Tim Crowder on the stop. See that call right there, to me, is simply a tendency breaker. Because mm -hmm. it's really not the personality of your team to line up and all of a sudden we're going to mash inside. Especially against a Texas team that's number two in the NCAA against the run. To me, you have to make your way throwing the ball all night long if you're Texas Tech. On third and goal, this time they'll go from the gun. Here comes Texas with a bunch of white jerseys into the flat. Touchdown, Texas Tech! His first touchdown reception for the sophomore. 
They threw the flood, the, the fade route before. Now they run Jared Hicks inside and run Eric Morris out to the flat. So he just comes off of off the tail of Hicks coming inside, almost like a pick route, what they would call an offense a rub route. Sorry, as a defensive back, it's a pick. <laughs> but, but it worked out quite well. They didn't even have to pick. They ran it so well. Relinka's extra point is good. Eric Morris has had eight receptions in the last three games for the Red Raiders. He comes up with touchdown number one. Already with five plays plus 18 yards. They have 168 yards throwing the football. And they've got two touchdown passes already tonight against this Texas defense. Cosby and Selvin Young back to receive the kick of Keith Toogood. Perfect name for a kicker. Definitely, especially the way he kicked the first kickoff. And this one may do likewise. And five yards deep, they'll take a knee on it. The touchdown again. Well, what happens here is you have Jared Hicks, he's going to run an inside route and hopefully let Eric Morris rub off of him. Because Texas is playing man-to-man, -man, that clears out the defensive back on the side. If it's zone, he would, able to stay, he would be able to stay in the flat. But in man coverage, He's not there. Eric Morris takes advantage. Touchdown, Tech. And he's loving it, isn't he? Did you see that sign before? We yeah. drove 412 miles to see Tech score two touchdowns, one every 206 miles. <laughs> Eric Morris is hoping to give him a reason to score, a reason to come, keep coming back. They're creative. A little shuffle pass. Selvin Young. Texas Tech is waiting for it. That is a play that Mike Leach loved to run when he was Bob Stoops' offensive coordinator. Bob kept the play. A lot of people are using it. And that we have to give our props to Lee Gross Cup for that one. The, the Cup made it famous at the University of Utah. And Texas saw it last week at Nebraska. Brandon Jackson ran it 49 yards for a touchdown against their defense. Make up a four on the play. Second and six. Young again. And Texas Tech defense is swarming. Gets up to about the 28-yard line. Pick up a four. Our first and ten line is brought to you by Napa. Third down and two for the Longhorns. This is their first third down try tonight. Early in the game, Colt McCoy's throwing a lot of long passes into the flat. The short hitches. Mm -hmm. and allowed the receivers to get upfield. That's been a big staple for them early tonight. Tech only rushes three out of the flat. Should have been intercepted. Pass is incomplete. Fletcher, Fletcher Session had it. Intended for Lima Sweet. Good read, though, by Session. Terrific read and break by number 42 Session into the flat and gets enough of a hand on the ball that Lima Sweet can't get to it. Beautiful play by Fletcher Session, the linebacker, because he read his keys, never retreated, and ran right to the flat and was able to knock the ball away. Trevor Gurland is going to kick it away. Greg Johnson back, not on the team tonight because of a sore groin we told you about a couple of weeks ago. So Gurland is going to get the punt. Amendola is back, and it's a bad kick off the side of his foot. It'll go to the 48-yard line, and that's where Texas Tech will take over. Only 24 yards on the kick. A lot of big games going on today. Here's Mark Fine looking down. Thank you, Mark. Michael Griffin was down. Trainers came out, but he's up under his own power. That's good news. Penalty flag near him. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if he got really clobbered, maybe a, a block in the back, yeah. as often happens on kick plays. Oh, that's what it is right there. Okay. Yeah, that's, what it, that's what it was. Danny Amendola, the, the punt returner, took a free running shot at Michael Griffin when the ball was kicked behind him and it rolled out of bounds. The officials have done a big time job and the NCAA has placed a real emphasis on taking care of defenseless players in the field of play. And Abendola took a shot there and the pen will be penalized for it. That really hurts the great field position that they had gained on the punt. 21 yards on the punt. And of course the penalty puts it back to the 36-yard line. That's where Texas Tech will take over. They've scored on both possessions for Mike Leach so far. And it's been the Grand Herald Show. 16 passes, 12 have been complete. A couple of touchdowns already. Shannon Woods, left side. Penalty flag is probably going to be offside against Texas. 
Let's talk about those splits of Texas Tech. We've seen it with a couple of other offenses. Missouri today, for instance, has them. They've patterned it off of Texas Tech. What it does too, Charles, doesn't it make defensive players run more? Yeah, what it does is offside defense number 80, five yards, first down. Yeah, and what it does is it tends to make you what they call run the curve a lot farther. Look at the splits here between the players. All right, what you got is a lot of gap between the offense between all the offensive linemen. So if you're rushing as a defender, you've got to go. You've got to go that much farther to try and get to the quarterback, especially with an outside rush. And you're also thinking, I got to get there quicker, which may be the offsides. First down and five. Harrell looking, throws it out to Amendola. Has some running room over the 50 to the 45. Mark him out at the 44-yard line. Talk about poise in the pocket and staying back there and realizing, yes, I'm going to take the hit, but it's worth it for me to complete it as Brian Robinson actually gets a hand up into his face. Fortunate that he's not fortunate that he is not flagged on the play. But Danny Amendola, the hit that he put on Michael Griffin is not one that anyone's going to advocate as a good shot on someone, but it underscores the aggressiveness right now that Texas Tech is playing with. They are the ones rocking Texas back on their heels on every play. Pickup of 16 inside of four minutes. Little razzle-dazzle. Amendola is going to be dumped back at the 50-yard line. A loss of seven on the play. The shot Bobino coming up from that linebacker spot. The sophomore from Lamarck, Texas. So that's a tough one for a play caller as we look at Mike Leach because everything's working so well right now. Mm -hmm. He thinks that he's got Texas on the run a little bit. He wants to utilize their speed against them with a reverse. So you take a little bit of a gamble, mm -hmm. and this time it doesn't pay off. Doesn't seem to bother him, though. No. He goes, okay, we lost him. They'll go right back at him. Right. Second down and 17, 323 to play in the opening quarter. See all the pointing from the offensive line to make sure the blocking assignments. They rush five, Harrell complete over the 45, down to the 44-yard line. Grant Walker out of the reception. Log on to Rivals.com and ask Charles a question. Find Ask Charles only on Rivals.com, your online home for college football. Situation, third down and 10 from the 43-yard line inside of three minutes. And normally with Gene Chizik, this means they're going to try and come after Graham Harrell with more than their front four. This is where they try and heat him up and bring extra guys. Can they defend in the secondary? Number five, Harrell looks, fires, complete first down, Texas Tech. Joel Filani down to the 22-yard line. See, the Texas Tech receivers read the blitz, and they know where they're going to go with him. Filani turns Deion Beasley just slightly, just enough to get inside and make the catch. But this is why the play works, the protection. They brought five, and the offensive line handled everyone. Graham Harrell able, able to step into the throw for a 19-yard gain. And we saw Beasley picked down by Missouri's or by uh, Baylor Sean Bell. And then Nebraska went after mm -hmm. him. He's a true freshman. They'll continue to go after him until he is able to stand up. Review. Boy, they didn't even let him try to snap it. Usually teams get up there in, in a hurry. The question I have is, what's under review? What's under review? It was a it was a clean catch. This is going to be interesting. So we're going to let's, let's take a look at it and make sure he did catch it. Well, he had it and then went to the ground. What do you think? He's down, but he'd already possessed, he'd already the, possessed ball. the ball as the ball came out late. I understand. Okay. <laughs> So I don't get myself into a whole lot of trouble here. I get it, but at the same time, we're really, we're, we're getting close to where we're hurting our guys on the field and their ability to, to call a football game. That's right. Because right now they are so hesitant and so jumpy about everything that happens. It's like, well, let's take it to review. Because they need to have that affirmation. The confidence that they need to have may not be there. Well, he clearly it's, has it. To me, it's a catch. A fumble, and he possesses the ball. He recovers his own fumble. I think that's what they should rule. I just hope that we can continue to go ahead and play and not kill the brief momentum this game has already. And that's what happens. And Tech has all this rhythm going right now, and then you have this, and it kind of stops the game on a, on a call that... After review, 
The pass is incomplete. Oh, my. Third down. Oh, my. That, that, what, what did they see that we didn't? I need to, you know, Walt Anderson is the new director of officials at the Big 12, and he's a terrific guy. I have a feeling that he and I are going to have a conversation this week because they're going to have to explain this one to me. Well, he, Ball's caught. One foot down. Here comes the other. It. Then it comes out. Then up. it comes out. Should be a yeah, catch, a fumble, that. and a recovery. Not an incomplete pass, in my estimation. Now, if I can, I wonder if Mike Leach would re-challenge it and say, hey, well, let's take a second look at this. See, I don't think, you, you know, and, he, he can, but I think it's a waste of time. And they also they're moved, go back and do that. And well, they also had already moved the chains. So you got to go back to the previous line of scrimmage. Which was the 43. Well, this is a downer. Had great momentum and then boom. Well, right now, what they need to be doing if you're Texas Tech, you've got to have your offense in their huddle, preparing to run the next play. Ball was ruled incomplete. Fourth down. See, now you can't spend any time going back over it. You've got to continue to move on. But in my estimation, they didn't get that one correct. Greg Sager, what do you have for us? Well, Claire Gossman, the referee, came over and he put the headset on. He called up the, re the uh, booth upstairs and he said, what on earth are we replaying? What is under review? And they go, whether or not it was complete or incomplete. And then, of course, he got the ruling that it wasn't. So Charles was talking about not having confidence for your calls. He didn't even know why they were reviewing that. Yeah, because he didn't understand why. I I'm with you, Craig. It, you know, he, he could not figure that out. It looked like a completion. A fumble and a recovery by the receiver. And a fair catch is being called for by Texas, but it'll scamper into the end zone. Well, John Lewis is the man who made the call down. He's the head replay official with Richard Wittenberg up in the booth. But I think uh, Mike Leach, I guarantee his video guys are sending a tape to those guys right now up to Dallas. SI.com now for the latest news, score, stats, analysis, and more. For more on college football and Stuart Mandel's power rankings, go to SI.com today. And now the Texas offense needs yeah. to take advantage of the gift that they were just given. Exactly. Jamal Charles joins Colt McCoy in the backfield. McCoy has some time, looking to go deep, and he is going to be dropped back at the 12. Jake Ratliff, the sophomore at Alot Knight High School. And Jake Ratliff will get the kudos for the sack, but he needs to go back and high five everyone who was in coverage on this play. Because there was plenty of time for Colt McCoy to find a receiver, but there was nowhere for him to go with the football. Lima Sweet, covered well by Chris Parker. Underneath, Darcel McBath. Mm -hmm. On the opposite side, no one there. Loss of six, second and 16 from the 14. McCoy, pressure again, intercepted. Could be seven for Tech, and it is. Fletcher Session with the interception and the touchdown. It was a cover two look, two deep safeties, two short corners, linebackers dropping in the zones. He thought Jamal Charles was gonna hook up where the where the hash marks were. Instead, he went outside, the ball thrown inside. Fletcher Session became the receiver, not Jamal Charles. Fletcher Session running like a fullback in high school. He's a former soccer player. He's been nursing a little ding knee. Honorable mention Big 12 and Colt McCoy throwing the interception only his fourth of the year. And the extra point is good. Now when you talk about great Texas Tech coaches, you have to mention the name of a good friend of ours, Spike. And there's Mac Brown doing the best coaching he can, keeping his young quarterback into the ball game, right? Yep. Not chastising him, letting him know his mistake. And hey, I've got confidence in the young man. Let's go out and get it done. Well, when you talk to some of the former players, including somebody like Vince Young, he says, listen, Matt Brown is more than a coach. He's a father figure to all of us. He's not afraid to put his arm around you and say, 
Don't worry about it. Let's get this thing going. That's exactly what we saw with Colt McCoy there. 21 nothing. Tech shocking the number five team in the country. And hey, what is it about us in doing games that involve the University of Texas? Where we see them get down big twice with Oklahoma State in the last two years. Mm -hmm. A few weeks ago, they were down 10 zip to Baylor in the first quarter. We've yep. learned never to count out the Texas Longhorns. They won all of those games. Well, Mac Brown knows that you can never count out Texas Tech. In fact, he asked Spike Dyke call, and we still have to figure out a way to win. Well, so far, Mac Brown is right. The run didn't get a whole lot, maybe a couple of yards on the play. Colt McCoy, right now, he's the young redshirt freshman quarterback. You can see he's got one interception tonight. Do they change anything just to make it simpler for him because he's down 21 nothing? You don't want him to press, I would think. No, you don't want him to press, but I don't think there's anything to change. He just made a mistake on the throw. Continue to run your offense, but what they really need to do is challenge the guys up front because right now, Texas Tech's defensive front is whipping the vaunted offensive line of mm -hmm. Texas. Out of 35 seconds, second down and eight. Not much going on there. Maybe back to the line of scrimmage for Selvin Young. And they're going to give about a two-yard pickup on the play. This Texas Tech defense, the things they've concentrated on under Lyle Sentensich, a couple of things, alignment and leverage in all formations. That's the one thing they wanted to be really sure of tonight. Being able to read their keys on every play. As they say, when you see a certain alignment, read certain keys. What is the offensive lineman doing? That will take you to the football. And right now, they're running 11 red shirts to the football on every snap. And that's the way the first quarter is going to end. Graham Harrell throws for a couple of touchdown passes, 191 yards. The defense scored. Tech lead. Can't imagine why. No, no clue. You don't think that was deliberate on the Tech people's part, uh, do you? We'll go out on a limb and say probably. Third down and seven for Texas from the 23-yard line. Tech is going to show blitz here. I don't think they will. I think they're going to show it and back off and play coverage. McCoy now moving out of the pocket, throws across his body, gets the first down up to the 32-yard line. Quan Cosby on the reception. That's his fifth catch already tonight. See, it's a double-edged sword because you show the blitz and then you drop back into coverage, but then you don't get anyone to get pressure in the face of Colt McCoy, so he has plenty of time to find a target. If you rush at, if you rush at him and now you spring free and go man coverage, you worry about it becoming a big play with the secondary that Texas Tech has. They don't run as well as others. This time he tries the other side. Another complete up to the 35-yard line. Jordan Shipley. His second reception of the evening. Fletcher Session was on the coverage. See, I think that Texas's run game, because it's so much sideways, mm -hmm. kind of plays to the strength of the defense of Texas Tech. Because they're a little bit lighter up front, but they move well and flow to the football. So I would not be surprised if Greg Davis changes up at some point and runs a little bit of eye formation and tries to get a little more downhill on them up front. Second down and six. Selvin Young looking for some running room, tries to get the corner, doesn't get it. Got back to the line of scrimmage and probably plus one, and we have a penalty flag thrown. Selvin Young, the ball carrier, tackle by number 49, Joe Garcia, flying on the ball. Joe Garcia coming up from that strong safety spot for the tackle. Face mask, defense, five yards. You know the good thing that Texas has going for it, despite being down 21 zip, is that they have put a lot in the bank with Colt McCoy, meaning right. he's earned their respect by his toughness, leading them back against Nebraska last week in the snow. All of those things have gone into it to where they know that they've got a quarterback that they can count on in the huddle. So I don't think their confidence will lag this early in the ball game. Plus, if you take in the last few seasons, with the comebacks they've had, they know how to get that done. And you saw the six TD passes versus Baylor that was on TBS. McCoy scrambling. He's dangerous. We shot Salas in Nebraska. Gets the first down as he crosses the 50 down to the 46-yard line. You talk about tough. I tell you what, last week he took a couple of shots by Adam Carriker in the black shirt defensive. There. He delivered. 
and a big victory last week in Lincoln. And that last one was a touchdown pass. Down the point, looks right, throws hooked, overthrown for Lima Swede. That'll bring up a second down and 10 from the 46-yard line. He had pressure in his face. I think that was number 51, Deke Bake, who has really played well in recent weeks for Texas Tech, a former defensive end. He's moved inside to tackle. And he's been very consistent. You and I watched him on tape against Iowa State, making nice plays, moving the line of scrimmage back when he's in the ball game. Now Shipley's in the slot, second down and 10. Sticking with the shotgun. Charles. And he just bowls his way over the 35 to the 34. That's good for a long run first down. If anybody thinks his Texas team is down and out, forget about it. Yeah, and that looked a little bit more like a downhill run. Watch how they do it with the zone read. They pull Stuttered 64 and Tony Hill 79. And Jamal Charles from the side he came from simply came over, got the ball, and then went back to that side following those two offensive linemen. It's similar to the old counter tray mm -hmm. that the Washington Redskins made, made famous. Tony Hills, by the way, is 6'6", 300 pounds when he pulls. That's a lot of man. <laughs> That's a lot of man. That'll tilt the field. And first and 10 from the 34. And a simple pass up to the 30-yard line, complete. Michael Finley, his first reception of the night. He had four receptions versus Nebraska. And it's been fun to watch this redshirt freshman from Dybal, Texas, grow as a tight end. First couple of games, I'm not sure he knew where he was on the field or supposed to be. But it seems like he's progressing. He's getting a pretty good relationship with Colt McCoy. He is, and it paid off last week with four catches at Nebraska. And he feels like they're developing the type of relationship. They're hoping that it will evolve into what Vince Young had with David Thomas. Yes. They're all Big 12 tight end last year. Second and seven. Kelvin Young, right side, got the first down, and then some as he runs his way down about the 17-yard line. That's just flat-out strong running by Selvin Young, the senior out of Houston, Texas. And you know the difference is? Watch how Texas controls the offensive line on this play. See, there's no penetration by Texas Tech. That allowed for a gap, and then Selvin Young found the corner before he was run out of bounds by number 23, Anthony Hines. Pick up a 14 on the play, and we've got a timeout by Texas Tech's defense. They want to talk about it. 12.09 to play in quarter number two. Texas Tech leading the Longhorns. First down and 10 from the 17 for the Longhorns. You know, they haven't found Lima Swede yet right there. And they go from the eye formation. Tech is right there to meet Selvin Young. We thought that just maybe they may go a little more eye formation tonight. You know, they dabbled in it a little bit last week against Nebraska. Greg Davis, offensive coordinator, took time to tell us, yes, our whole running game is the same, whether it's the eye or the gun. That's Greg Davis right there calling the next play. The only thing that's different with the, with the eye is that you get the fullback ISO. You get the isolation for the fullback leading. And look what we have right now, the eye formation. Well, Lyle I, I think play action here, though. Well, Lyle Sendline, the big center, says, I love it. Going nose to nose. Now they do play action. Has a man dropped. Incomplete. Intended for Linus Swede. He thought he had it. Darcel McBath got the hand on it. The pass was there, Charles. Well, I think that this was a great call by Greg Davis because when he showed eye formation, your natural instinct is the tech for the tech defensive backs and, and for the line is to think they're going to run right at us. But Darcel McBath saves the touchdown with a tremendous effort coming in underneath and knocking it away before Lima Swede can tuck it away. I think Swede thought he had six. I don't think he sent McBath no. there and he didn't pull it in. Chris Obanaya in the backfield along with Selvin Young. Straight drop, McCoy looking, has a man wide open. Touchdown, Texas, Nate Jones. Seems to me that two guys covered your Michael Finley and left Nate Jones all on his own. Chris Parker, number 17, was there, but he passed him off as if he expected there was help behind him. He went out to his lane to cover the flat. Easy one for Nate Jones. Good pass by Colt McCoy. Good catch by Jones. 
Eleven eighteen to play in the first half. The extra point. Ryan Bailey, the hero of last week's game, tacks on the extra point, and Texas is on the board. Through them, the Red Raider fans love them what they see so far. 21-7, 11-18 left in quarter number two, which is usually the best quarter offensively for Texas Tech. They only average 11 points in the second half. They got to get their momentum and continue it here on this drive. I think this is a big drive for Texas Tech because they can't continue to dwell on what happened with the call, the controversial call. They took away another big drive that they had going. They've got to come back and run the same offense that we've seen that's put 21 points on the board. And they'll get it first and 10 from their own 20. Let's get an update from our student. All right, thanks, Mark. You can see what both teams do in the second quarter. In the rest of the game, Texas much better. Woods and Kobe Lewis now in the backfield. Aaron going deep across the middle. Caught inside the 45. Still on his feet. Hicks down to the 38-yard line. We talked earlier about the strength and the size of these physical receivers. And Jared Hicks, just a little bit of a push inside on Terrell Brown. A 40-yard hookup from Graham Harrell. Talk about getting the momentum back. Six plays plus 18 yards already against this Texas defense. First and 10 for the long run 40. They come up the blitz. Harrell reads it, dumps it out to Woods. Spins as he gets inside the 35 down to the 33 yard line. Graham Harrell read that the fact that there are a bunch of Longhorns coming after him. And that was a 30 yard plus touchdown pass last week against against Iowa State when he read the exact same blitz, threw it out to the flat to Shannon Woods, and he took it into the end zone. Texas's ability to run well kept that from being a bigger game. Down to the 33, first and 10. Now look at the yards they've laid out, 229 already tonight in the past game. Second and three, check that. That penalty flag is thrown in. I think, I think Texas may have been a little bit off sides. You know, what happened after that Missouri and Colorado game, there was a lot of dissension on this Texas Tech team, and Mike Leach was not pleased about it, and he saw it really kind of early on in the year when we talked to him. He wanted to do something that bonded the Offside team. Offside with contact. Number 80, defense, five yards, first down. So he picked up a game. Yeah, one of the games that most of us have played as children, four square. And look at how these guys, you know, they compete, they bond, they argue good naturedly. But you know the biggest thing? They stayed in the locker room and hung out with each other. And that's what Mike Leach says was lacking with this team. Remember the old Red Sox, 24 oh. guys, 24 Cavs, mm -hmm. going your own way all the time? The best teams, you always hear about them spending more time with each other. And they've done plenty of that in the recent weeks. Well, he learned that the little things tend to multiply, and that's what happened after the losses. All the little pettiness got to him. Now Harold has a man inside the 15, down to the 14, Joel Filani. That is his second reception of the night as we're closing in on nine minutes to play in the second. And this is a route we've seen all evening from Joel Fulani, the slam. And he cuts it a little bit short because he saw that Marcus Griffin was coming over from the strong safety position. And Graham Harrell read the exact same thing. And they hooked up for 17 yards. Ball thrown in a perfect spot where only the receiver was going to get it. Now they can get a first down. It's on the 11, first and 10. Splits are even bigger in the offensive line now. Woods. Dips the head, gets down to about the eight-yard line. Tim Crowder with his second reception, or second tackle. How important is it for Texas Tech to answer that touchdown by Texas? Well, that's what we talked about at the beginning of the drive, right as the kickoff occurred. We said how important it was because they've had trouble in the second half, scoring points Tech has, but you want to answer right back after Texas comes down and puts one in the end zone, and the Tech offense has responded quite well. Get Filani and Johnson on the near side right here. Second down and seven. Woods up the middle inside the five. Breaks his way down to the four. Michael Griffin on the stop. 
His third tackle of the evening. You know, we've see, seen from them early in this ball game. We've seen them try to throw the fade route to Jared Hicks to the wide side. All right? We also have seen Hicks coming in on the slant. Morris cutting off of him for the touchdown. Here, don't be surprised if you get the slant in route. Maybe Hicks to the wide side, faking the fade and coming inside. So Falani near side, Hicks far side. Third down and two. Woods leans forward. Not sure if he got down to the two. Looks like they're going to mark it at the three. It'll bring up a fourth down and one. Very surprised that they would run that play there because it's not their personality mm -hmm. to mash it inside against the number two rush defense in the country. Yeah. And if they're coming out with a field goal here, that surprises me even more. Mike Leach wants to have the points on the board. I get that totally because that's a gamble on fourth down. I was really surprised on third down he did not throw the football. We've known Mike uh, Leach a long time. He is probably in a lot of pain that he's going to kick this field goal. <laughs> he can't believe that he sent him out there. Did I just do that? <laughs> Alex Reyes is the holder. I think it's a good move, though. Get the points. Get the points. And they do tank on three. And Graham Harrell's got his guys pumped up. And Texas Tech answers Texas's touchdown with a field goal. 24-7, 6.51 to play in the first half. Cosby and Young set to receive the kick by Keith Tugood. Kicking into a little breeze, it's going to be a short kick. Young right up the middle, tripped up as he gets close to the 25-yard line. The big question for Texas, where is Linus Swede? You know, in a, in a big game last week, Ron, Georgia Tech was unable to get the ball to their number one receiver, Calvin Johnson, against Clemson, and they paid for it in a 31-7 loss. Thus far tonight, Texas struggling to get the ball to their number one receiver. They thought they had this one, but Darcel McBath makes a tremendous play to knock it out of his hands. Let's see if they might want to go quick screen, hitch route, anything to get the ball in his hands and get him going. Well, Chris Parker goes out one-on-one -on -one with him on the near side. Charles in the backfield. Swede used as a decoy. Pass is complete. Willie Pittman on the reception. That is his first catch of the evening. We saw his breakout game against Baylor a couple of weeks ago. That'll bring up a second down. And six. The thing, the thing that Tech's defense needs to continue to do is make Texas grind it out and force them into multiple play drives. They can't afford to give up big plays that break off of huge chunks of yardage in one pop. Charles breaks into the secondary. Still on his feet. Gets close to the 35-yard line. He want it, and he wants to live up to the image of Roy Williams. Sags, I have a question for you after this play. Juan Cosby wide to the right. First and 10 from the 34 inside of six minutes. McCoy, look, steps up. Puts his head down, gets hit, still goes as he gets over the 40 up to the 42-yard line. Craig, my understanding is that when Lima Sweet wanted that number, he talked to Roy Williams about taking that number as well as the coaching staff because they told him what he'd have to live up to. Is that true? Yes, it is. And Roy Williams had no problem with it. But the coaching staff said, are you sure you want to wear Roy Williams' number right now? And he said, yep, he's my idol and I want to be just like him. Well, my question, my other question is, is that a green Texas cap Roy Williams is wearing? Yeah, it's, I didn't know it was St. Patrick's Day here. It's I hey, remember it's Halloween weekend. Oh yeah, my bad. <laughs> Second down and three. Charles. Left side's got the first down as he gets over the 45-yard line. By the way, line was sweet. Touchdown pass in six straight games, which ties. Roy Williams. Williams. And I think what is he? Three off of Roy Williams single season mark mm -hmm. as we as we begin tonight. But he still has a lot of football left. Five minutes to play. In the first half, if you just joined us, Texas Tech jumped out to a 21-0 lead. A couple of Graham Harrell touchdown passes, an interception return for a touchdown by Fletcher's session. Texas has answered, and then Tech came back with a field goal. That's where we are now. McCoy feeling a little bit of pressure. Deep out pass incomplete intended for Billy Pittman. 
Our first and ten line is brought to you by Napa. Texas is not operating against a and that's Billy Pittman going to the sideline getting some attention there. They'll need him back quickly. But they are not operating against a, a Texas Tech defense that's throwing a lot of new things at them. It's not like they're looking up and seeing a disguise coverage, mm -hmm. you know, something exotic. Mostly what they're seeing is cover two, cover three, three deep zone, two deep zone, and they're going to try and bracket Lima Swede from time to time with a corner and a safety. And now Lima Swede wide to the right. McCoy looks back, throws the screen. Backside, Finland, running room, over the 35, still on his feet, tiptoeing down the sideline to mark him out at the 29-yard line. And what a tremendous block he got downfield from his offensive line. Looked like Tony Hills able to use his big body and nimble enough to get downfield. Watch coming at you. Finley gets the ball on the screen, but out in front, 79 and white. Throws the chat. There it is. He's down on the ground. He threw the first block. Casey Stuttered, number 64, actually blocks two players from Texas Tech. Watch Stuttered, 64. There's one and a second one. Wow. The offensive line for Texas now establishing themselves in a big way, a 26-yard game. 444 in the half. Cosby wide to the right. McCoy keeps it. Great fake. Has a man wide open. Touchdown, Texas. Jordan Shipley. <laughs> Colt McCoy sold that from the beginning. He did, but watch Jordan Shipley, number eight. He sells it well with the out and up, and then goes inside Antonio Huffman because Antonio Huffman ran to the out. A terrific job of knowing when to break the rules of route running. He jumped him, he jumped him on the outside. He said, oh, go ahead went inside and Colt McCoy had plenty of time to find Jordan Shipley, their, their father's college roommates at Abilene Christian. Yeah, I'll tell you Jordan what, Shipley. Shipley had the first two years, knee problems, a very talented young man. He was the recipient of a lot of Stephen McGee passes. Now the quarterback at Texas A&M while at Burnett High School. So Texas pulls within 10 with 435 to play in the half. Teams over 200 yards total offense. Texas Tech with 254. All of that coming through the air. Texas with 212. But the big numbers. Texas Tech still leads it by 10. 24-14. Colt McCoy with the touchdown pass. He's got a couple tonight. Along with one interception. 22 touchdowns for McCoy. Four interceptions on the year. Hunter Lawrence will kick it away. Now the emphasis shifts to the Texas defense, doesn't it? Yes, it does. They've got to show an ability to slow down Texas Tech, which to, to this moment they have not been able to do. Tech has really had their way offensively with Texas's defense tonight. Shannon Woods, Eric Morris back to receive the kick. Tech answered the last touchdown by Texas with a field goal. Kicking with the win. That'll go into the end zone. Texas Tech will take over first and 10 from their own 20. Let's take a look at it right now. You vote one way. Let's see how the game unfolds. You may vote another. That's exactly right. Mac Brown wasn't real pleased with the first BCS ranking that came up. Moved up a little bit this past week. With USC moving and if Texas can win, they'll probably move up even more. Eric, being rushed, holds out of it as long as he can, gets rid of it to Robert Johnson. Up to the 26-yard line. The touchdown once again by Texas. You know, one of the things that you notice about a lot of pass routes is that you often have a number of guys in the sight lines of the quarterback. So right there, you've got one. There's Shipley, right? Two and three. That way, the quarterback has three targets. All his sight lines, he picks out the right one. Boom, touchdown. That's a Don Coriel staple. And he's running his Air Coriel attack at San Diego State and then on into the pros. And second and three. Texas Tech has not had much luck running the football. Before that run, they were minus one on seven carries. Listen, they're running the football just to keep Texas honest. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they know their big plays have to come from Graham Harrell's right arm. That's their offense. That's their personality. If they pop one big, so be it. That would be great. But that's not what they're counting on. This is just enough to keep the Texas defense honest so they can't run right to the receivers. Well, even like, uh, you know, Mac Brown was telling us earlier this week, he said they lull you to sweep and then uh, sleep and then bang, they hit you with something like a run play. 
Eight rushes, zero yards for Texas, but this or Texas Tech, but this is their bread and butter. Amendola gets close to midfield. Yeah, Graham Harrell, just a sophomore, 6'3", 197 pounds. Got booed during the Missouri game when we were here. Fans didn't like it. He was replaced by Todd, but he has bounced back effectively these last two weeks. And he's replaced by Chris Todd for a couple series at the Colorado game also. And after that game, Mike Leach said he made a mistake. Looks like Rashad Bobineau, starting linebacker, is down for Texas. But what Mike Leach was saying is, I made a mistake because it's like a pitcher. Sometimes you got to let him go through some tough innings in order to come out on mm -hmm. the other side. Here's Craig Sager. Well, Rashard Bobino, I do not think is injured. He lost his shoe and was telling everybody he lost his shoe. And one of his teammates pushed him down to the ground and said, get down so we have time to put your shoe on. But that's, oh. that, well, you know something? That's good coaching by the teammates. That's because otherwise you're out there running around with one shoe and they don't have to take the time out. That's good. That's good. Good pickup, Sags. Listen, as a former player, I remember my old <laughs> coordinator, Ken Donahue, saying, Charles, I don't care if your head comes off, pick it up and run off the field. we got to save those timeouts. <laughs> it's for Oregon State in the last minute of USC today. Graham Hill trying to set up the little slip screen, and he does to Filani. Fumble! Texas has it at the 40-yard line. And we have a penalty, and it might be a face mask to go along with everything else. And wouldn't you know who came up with the ball? Aaron Ross. Aaron Ross. He has been Mr. Turnover in the last four to five games for Texas. Well, he's forced seven turnovers, dating back to Oklahoma game. Last six games, four, seven After turnovers. possession, personal foul, grabbing the face mask. Number nine on the red, 15 yards, first down. Boy, this play looked beautiful. Little inside screen. Look at the wall in front. All the offensive linemen getting downfield. But the ball was popped out. Look like Scott Derry, number 33, popped it out. Aaron Ross, the recipient. There's the face mask by Robert Johnson trying to make the tackle on Aaron Ross after the turnover. Nine fumbles the last three games prior to tonight. Texas Tech's Mike Leach's offense has lost six of those. They've had problems with fumbles. And you can see Texas on turnover, second most in the NCAA. And it's time for Mike Leach's defense. Lyle Sensic, the defensive coordinator, to assume that pirate persona that Mike Leach talks about. All right, they need to scuttle Texas's offense right here before the half. 222 and a half. McCoy's going for the big tater. The Swedes got him. Touchdown, Texas. His first reception of the night, and it goes for six. And you, you know, you just have a feeling at this point that the aggressiveness comes out of Texas. Great field position after a turnover, and I put the emphasis on the Tech defense because they have to know that. They have to feel that going on the field. Their responsibility is to hold Texas out before the half. They didn't live up to it on that play. Terrific throw from Colt McCoy to Lima Swede. And yeah, Roy Williams likes it. That took seven seconds. The extra point by Ryan Bailey is good. And with 2.15 to play in the half, 24-21 is our score. Tech leading by a field goal. Here's Mark Fine. All right, Mark, pretty good, pretty good day of football today. Big win for Oklahoma State, big win for Oregon State. Congratulations to Coach Mike Riley and Coach Gundy. Of course, we'll have Coach Gundy against uh, Texas next week right here on TBS. Hunter Lawrence, they took his red shirt off a couple of weeks ago prior to that Baylor game, wanted him to kick off because of Greg Johnson and the growing problems he's had. The Tech offense must be concerned right now with a Texas defense that'll be charged up. When we talked with Gene Chizik, the defensive coordinator, he said sometimes turnovers just come in flurries. And they just got one. They're going to be eager to force another one. Well, Texas Tech has 15 touchdown drives under two minutes this year, number two in the NCAA. Let's take a look at the route again by Lima Sweet. Listen, anyone who knows us knows that I like to see offenses attack after a turnover. It's exactly what Texas did. 
and that was a simple nine route, a go route, where Lima Sweet just went straight down the field, ran past everyone and said, Colt, just throw it out there, my man. I'll take care of the rest. Texas only down three at this point. Well, they wanted to get him one-on-one. -on -one. That was one of the keys coming into the game, and they did with Chris Parker. He got no help. Inside of two minutes, Texas Tech takes over. They can't go into a shell, but ball security is big here. Oh, you don't want to get uh, too fancy, Smurphy, out there. Jared Hicks gets close to the 30-yard line. They're going to mark it right at the 30-yard line. Gets out of bounds, 146 to play in the half. We told you about their scoring in the second half, only 11 points a game. Mike Leach has to lead at halftime. 43-2, but only 3-24 when they trail. I don't think much more needs to be said with that stat, does it? I mean, when you look at that kind of statistic, that tells you how important it is for Tech to go into the locker room in front. It's time to slip it to Woods. Skips over one tackle, has got a first down, and he gets out of bounds right at the 43 and a half yard line with 139 to play. The message from the Tech coaches to their offense, I'm quite sure, is simply, Texas has not stopped us. We stopped ourselves by coughing up the fumble. fumble. Yeah. All the, the whole first half, we've gone up and down the field. So don't let one fumble discourage you. Keep running. We'll, we just, just run our stuff. We should be fine. Because Filani had a lot of room to run. They were inside the 20 when he fumbled. First and 10 now at the 44. Harold looks, throws, complete. In Texas territory, down to the 48-yard line, Robert Johnson leans forward with one and a half to play. Clock is rolling. Second down and about three. And he comes off slowly. Remember, Tech's idea of a great drive is to end it in the end zone as the clock hits triple zeros. They want to bleed it down as well as score. Mike Leach's philosophy is a touchdown's the best defense you can have. Hard to argue with that. Here comes a rush of five. Incomplete. Pass intended for Grant Walker. The junior out of Flukerville, Texas. Clock stops with 61 seconds to play. That was very well covered by Aaron Ross. Mm -hmm. no, let's talk about Aaron Ross. We've got a second here. This is a guy that's definitely the Thorpe leading uh, candidate. He's a Nathan Basher kind of player. He's been Johnny on the spot for this Texas defense. And playing as well as any defensive corner in the country, according to his head coach and his defensive coordinators. Texas showing blitz on third and three. Here they come. Harold reads it. They slip it down to the 45-yard line. Good for a first down, Robert Johnson. That'll stop the clock with 56 seconds. Seven catches in the ball game for Johnson already in the first half. Boy, has he emerged out of Mike Leach's uh, <laughs> detention hall. Well, you got there, right? Left him home for the Colorado trip, says he wasn't living up to his, his responsibilities, missing weight workouts. Essentially told him, listen, it's up to you whether or not you play here or not anymore. And he's bounced back. Clock rolling now with 45 to play. Harrell has got time. Throws it up for grabs. It's going to be incomplete. Looking for the flag, and there it is. Aaron Ross just talking about him. He's going to be the culprit. Filani was the intended receiver. The first blush, a bad throw, turned into a good play for Texas Tech. So you always talk about locate the ball. Hard for DBs to do when they're running with their backs. Defense number 31. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Watch the pressure, all right? That's Drew Kelson, number four in the face of Graham, Graham Harrell. Forced a poorly thrown ball. Now, Aaron Ross doesn't know where the ball is. He just plays through the receiver. And I'm going to say this. My understanding of the college rule mm -hmm. is that there is no face guarding. You just can't have contact before the ball gets there. That's what I think Aaron Ross was called for. That puts the ball down to the 30 with 38 seconds to play. comes Texas, they bring five. Harold reads it, going deep into the end zone. Has Hicks, punt! Touchdown! You can't ask. 
has for a better matchup because Jared Hicks is working against backup corner Brandon Foster. And by the time he gets his head turned around, he has nothing left to make a play on the ball. Jared Hicks knew where the ball was and used his strength to make the play at the end. Graham Harrell naturally excited. Texas Tech really has not been stopped on offense in the first half. Six catches over 100 yards for Jared Hicks, seven for 75 for Robert Johnson. But Graham Harrell, another touchdown pass. And you can see the all-time touchdown receptions at Texas Tech one away from Mark, or for college, I should say. Look at this. See, Hicks knew where the ball was the whole time. Yeah. By the time Brandon Foster got turned around, he was a count, count and a half too late. And Jared Hicks is just too strong at that point. He comes down with it. Just think of what the senior year could have been for Jared Hicks if he had not missed the first three games mm -hmm. due to NCAA and academic questions. Remember we said 15 drives under two minutes? 16 now. now. They came into the game tied for second in the country in that statistic. With Nebraska and Clemson. And now they saw that three-point lead stretch back to a 10-point advantage with 24 seconds. How disheartening, disheartening is this for Texas? Here you have a great series. You pull within three, and then boom, you get, you, you, you get beat. Well, what's happening is that their defense continues to give up big plays, which is not normal for Texas. This is not something that they're used to having happen to them. They thought they'd establish a little bit of control. Texas Tech undaunted comes right back and strikes again. Well, we still have 24 seconds left, though. Good puts the foot into it. This is going to go about three yards deep. And Texas will take a knee. They'll have 19 seconds to work with. They might just go ahead and run the clock out here. Yeah. Remember, they get the ball, right? Mm -hmm. Don't they get the ball to start the yes. second half? They won the toss and deferred. So right here is not the time for heroes, I don't think. You go ahead, tuck it in, go to the half, and realize you're very much in this ball game. Anybody who's watched Texas on our air the last couple of years, yeah, there's no, they know the word comeback. No counting them out. Let's see what they decide to do. Well, Colt McCoy is going to try the little shuffle pass. That's your staple, though. Yep. You try a screen, you try a draw. If it breaks big, maybe you go for something later. But instead, you know, you get a little first down there. Seven seconds on the clock. Is that enough room to try for something deep? Let's we'll see what Matt Brown's thinking. And the clock is running. We'll get one more playoff. This will be the final play, unless there's a penalty. Selvin Young down the sideline, still on his feet, tiptoes out, and that's the way the first half is going to end. So Texas Tech opens up a 21 to nothing lead. Texas made a game of it, pulled within three, but then Tech strikes late in the first half to open up the margin to 10. Here's Craig Sig. You think you're bad, but oh, how sad. You're in the biggest fight that you've ever had. But don't let the blue bonnets fool you. Don't mess with Texas. Don't mess with Texas. All right. Welcome back to TBS Saturday Night College Football presented by Orbitz. We're set to start the second half. Texas Tech leads at 31-21 along with Charles Davis. I'm Ron Thulin. This Texas defense, they've already given up uh, more yards than they had any team this year and more passing yards. Haven't stopped Texas Tech at all. Not at all. Graham Harrell had 368 yards passing last week at Iowa State. He has 364 here at the half. The Texas defense has really struggled to contain this passing attack. Texas has outrushed them, but Texas Tech doesn't care about that. The turnover situation, Texas needs to force a lot more with the explosion plays. 10 plays of 15 plus yards for Texas Tech in the first half. Well, as we mentioned, Texas won the toss. Beginning of the game, they defer to the second half, so they'll have the ball to begin quarter number three. So the young lets it go over his head. And they'll have it first and 10 from their own 20 yard line. Too good has done a nice job keeping the ball out of reach of Texas tonight. Colt McCoy, not a bad first half. 16 to 21, 205 yards, three touchdowns. His longest one was 45 yards. Still a lot of 
time left. It's only a 10 point lead by these Red Raiders. Boy, runs the action. As they go to the eye formation, pitching it back to Selvin Young. Greg Sager had a chance to talk with Mac Brown before the start of the second half. Well, Coach, we're used to impressive comebacks by Texas. What do you have to do to complete this one? Oh, Craig, what we've got to do, number one, is keep our composure, believe in what we're doing, because we have been here before two years ago at Oklahoma State, last year at Oklahoma State. But we need to get something this first drive, and then we got to do something to stop them. They're as hot as I've ever seen on offense. That quarterback can't miss, so we got to knock a ball down, knock some ball loose, and we just got to keep playing on offense. After Colts. Well, he said keep the composure, and you expect that from a Mac Brown team. Colt McCoy throws it out in the flat. Pass caught by Lima Swede. That is his second reception. His first win, of course, for the 45-yard touchdown. Nice defense by Darcel McBath, number seven. Free safety, getting into the gap on, this, on, the, on the quick screen to Lima Swede. If he's not there, Swede has an alley to run upfield. You got to remember one thing when Texas is on the road. We saw it last week against Nebraska. They are aggressive in their play calling and I would expect that to be the case tonight. No reason they shouldn't be once they got on track. They had a good first half. Just a Texas Tech's offense has been as Coach Matt Brown said yeah. as hot as he's ever seen. McCoy over the middle incomplete pass intended for Swede. So Swede has two shots here in quarter number three. But Texas is going to be forced to kick it away. And this brings the crowd right back into it. Remember, we talked about alacrity in the first half, that they must play that way with alacrity, with enthusiasm, to keep the crowd into it. That's exactly what has happened. And that score right before the half, yeah. that was huge for Texas Tech. Because Mac Brown always talks about 91% of the time, the team that scores right before right. the half wins the game. I still don't know where he got that stat. <laughs> I'm, I'm still researching it. He used it with his team in Oklahoma this year, where they scored right before the half. They went on to win the game. Tonight, Tech has that stat to their advantage. And there is possible break as Amendola bobbles it, but he recovers it at the 35-yard line. Much better effort by Trevor Gurley. His first punt to 21 yards. This one much better. But here comes that potent Texas Tech offense again. 364 yards in that opening half, as Charles mentioned, no yards running the football. That's the most allowed by Texas this season, and we still have <laughs> two full quarters to play. Yes, and they've got to find a way, as their coach articulated to Craig Sager, to slow Tech down, to create plays. They've done a good job of forcing turnovers all year. They'll need a bunch of them here in the second half. Going to change things up, drops back into the gun. Tech rushes four. Has some time across the middle. Passes complete up to the 50 yard line. Eric Morris on the reception. Statistically, from a point standpoint, the third quarter is the slowest and the worst for Texas Tech. They want to change that tonight. Now, the, with the tempo they're going at here, they've gotten a boost from their defense to start the second half by forcing a three and out against Texas. And thus far this evening, Texas has not gotten enough pressure on Graham Harrell with just a four-man line. So he's able to stay back in the pocket and find open receivers. So he once tonight. Dangerous pass deep into the flat. Hicks got it. Scoots out of bounds in Texas territory down to about the 46-and-a-half-yard line. Jared Hicks now with seven receptions, over 135 yards, and a touchdown. They're loving what they're getting from Jared Hicks tonight. He had six catches last week. That was a season high because he's just getting back into the swim after missing the first three games due to NCAA and academic questions. Six receivers have caught passes tonight for Texas Tech. Texas moving around on defense. Here they come with the blitz. Harrell trying to run away from it. Being chased, throws it into the ground, incomplete. He got outside the tackle. The only two people near the ball, Brandon Jones was one of them, and Gabe Hall was the other. Weidman. Intelligent play by Graham Harrell. Get outside the tackle box, where the tackles normally line up as we look at the sacks. Texas averages nearly four per game, zero this evening. Offense. Boss him down. Oh, no, they are They're calling down. it. I didn't see the flag come in. You know, the only reason they would call this, ball didn't cross the line of scrimmage yeah. on the throw. You're right. 
He, threw, he, got, he got outside the tackle box because he's got to get outside of here where the tackle boxes would be. He's outside of that, but where the throw is, the ball didn't get past the line of scrimmage. So that's why you get the intentional grounding and the loss of down. So now it's third down and 17. Remember, not much has daunted this Texas Tech offense at all this evening. Mm -hmm. four, for, four for seven on third down conversions tonight for Texas Tech. Three wide receivers to the left. Can they get one on one to the bottom side with Robert Johnson, number nine? Look at the pressure. There's they're going to be their first sack of the night. Back at the 32 yard line, Graham Harrell goes down. That's only the 13th sack allowed by this Red Raider offensive line. Best season Mike Leach has had in protecting the passer, I believe, was 2003 when they gave up an average of two sacks per game. They're about on that pace this year with what they're giving up. Somewhere in that neighborhood, that should go down as a coverage sack. Secondary did a nice job blanketing the receivers. One sack out of every 35 pass attempts. That's not too bad. Pretty good average. Considering how many times they put it in the air, it's an excellent average. Texas looking for some big play to spark them. Could it come in special teams? Oddly kick. Back at the 25-yard line. Aaron Ross. Being surrounded. He's going to come back. He's got a wall for him. Over the 25, over the 30, over the 35, penalty flag is going to be thrown. Charles, you saw that happen, and you were waving your arms already. Well, as long as, long as that play stayed alive, that just brings the, 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 the specter of a hold or a clip in the back. He reverse field. <laughs> just makes it very difficult on his own blockers. Holding. 21, return team, 10-yard penalty, first down. Takes a good return and moves it back. Texas Tech is sacked for the first time tonight by the Texas defense, but they still lead by 10. Welcome back to Lubbock, Texas, where Texas Tech holding on to that 10-point advantage over the number five team in the country, 31-21. Texas with the football, 11-20 to play in the third on their own 25-yard line. From the eye. McCoy feels a little bit of pressure. Pass caught up over the 40-yard line to Michael Finley. That is his third catch of the evening. One of the things we haven't seen Texas do tonight is run the ball and break big runs. But that's a problem they've had since the Rice game. It's been since Rice that they've had a run of 20 yards or more. They have not had that. And they're looking to create those types of plays to take some of the pressure off of the offense. They've really had to grind it out a little bit more this year than what they're used to. That was good for a first down. First and 10 from the 42. McCoy steps up. Has some running room. Splits the defense. Still on his feet. Tripped up at the 40-yard line. Last week against Nebraska, we showed how decisive he was in running the football. He wasn't afraid to tuck it and go. Not at all. And Vince Lombardi used to tell his running backs when he was the coach of the Packers, not just to run to daylight, but to run to win. And on this run, that's what Colt McCoy did. Found daylight. And ordinarily, a quarterback, right, you're looking for some green to get down. He was trying to get through that gap and continue downfield. A 17-yard game. That's the biggest run of the night. This time, pressure again, scrambling again. May have been over the line of scrimmage, throws in the end zone, incomplete. I'm not so sure, Charles. He was down at about the 39-yard line when he let that ball go. Yeah, he really flirted with that line, didn't he? I think he was real close to letting it. And I think he may be fortunate that no flag was pulled yeah. from the pocket. Meaning the officials, of course. You know, talking about him running the football, Greg Davis was telling us earlier that, that they would like the quarterback to get him two new sets of chains every game, meaning if they have to scramble, try to get at least two first downs every game. Say his best running has been from their option attack. Vince Young was a zone read runner. Seven Young breaks through, past the linebackers, up to the close to the 30-yard line. Penalty flag comes flying in. That was a late one from the back judge, wasn't it? Yes, it was.
personal foul, face mask, number 56 defense, 15 yards, automatic first down. And Kellen Tillman right there trying to make a play on Selvin Young. He makes the tackle. It's a little bit too much mask. Oh, yeah. you know, that's, that's supposed to just be the mask rider, right? The Texas Tech? Yeah. yeah well. <laughs> Took the mask right off. They never tell you, you know, you're not supposed to take the mask off the old Lone Ranger. Yep. Off Tug, they go. Tug out what's his name's cape. There you can see penalties. Six for Texas Tech. And there's the mask rider. 70 yards and penalties for this Texas Tech team. A lot of eye formation this half. Down to about the 18 yard line. We question whether or not there should have been a flag for Cole McCoy crossing the line of scrimmage. Let's take a look at this. Line of scrimmage is the 40 yard, 40 yard line. Let's see if when he gets out of the pocket, see where he is when he throws the football. Oh yeah, he got lucky. That's close, isn't it? I think he's over the 40. Yeah, it's certainly, certainly he is straddling the 40. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like coaches used to tell me all the time, I never want to break any rules. I just want to crowd them. <laughs> they crowded the line of scrimmage on that one. Second down and 11 after the loss of one from the 17. Straight ahead running. Selvin Young inside the 15 down to the 14 yard line. Gain of three on the play. What's interesting to me is how much Greg Davis has gone to the I formation here in the second half because when we spoke with him, he didn't sound like he was a, a huge proponent of it. He wanted to use it more of a change up. And he's trying to convince his players that I formation doesn't mean that that allows us to get nasty or up front and run downhill. We can do it out of both formations, but it's a mindset. When you show I formation, that's like announcing to the world, here we come. That's right. Let's go, let's fire out and block someone. Maybe he's hoping to use it to spark his offensive line. Well, they need seven for the first down. Here comes the pressure. McCoy trying to get away from it. Gets rid of the first wave. Looks for the end zone. He's got it. Touchdown, Texas. His second rushing touchdown of the year. The belief level in Colt McCoy, the trust from the team continues to rise because of these types of plays. In obvious trouble and distress, finds his way to the end zone and gets them out of a tough situation. Texas on the board to start the second half. He knew exactly where he was and where the defenders were. You could see him looking to the right. The play is under review. Oh my goodness. Now well, they're trying to decide if he stepped out of bounds. Well, let's take a look. As he gets to the corner, now he's out running Kellen Tillman, number 56. Right Ooh, there, that's a tough one. He may yeah. very well have been. That would not be conclusive to me from that angle, but I bet you this one gives us a great look. Look for that left foot right. There. Right there. Looks like he hit the uh, the white part, didn't it? That's a tough one right there. Yes. If they do bring it back, I can understand why. Okay? I, I would understand that call if they bring it back to the two-yard line. And what was the ball across the goal line before that? You can't tell there. The you can't tell. Made. I think if you're going to say he stepped out, yeah. you probably put the ball, maybe you split the difference, put it on the one. Mm -hmm. Another angle. See, that's not conclusive to me yeah. from there. I thought our last shot would be the one that I would agree with if you want to over, overturn the call on the field. Well, we blew the fumble call, so. <laughs> no, no, no. We're we, 0 for 1 on those. No, we didn't blow that. <laughs> Okay. I, I know I'm biased, yeah. but no, we did not. Now, if you're Texas, you need to plan like they're going to put the ball on the one or the two yard line and have your team ready to roll. If you're Texas Tech, you have to plan like they're going to come at you and they're gonna, there's going to be a, there's going to be another play run. You don't want to stand around and be so uncertain and all of a sudden, oh, okay, we got snapped to it again. You have to plan like the next play will be snapped that way. Well, we just saw Colt McCoy looking pretty confident on the far side, as is Mac Brown. Okay, guys, let's is. go now. Let's go. <laughs> Sorry, let's go. 
<laughs> I understand reviewing. Let's go. I smell coffee perking down there. After review, the player was stepped out of bounds at the two. The ball is sparked at the one yard line. One yard line, first and goal. All right. No argument from me on that one because I thought there was enough there to make to say that he stepped on the side. But the ball's on the one, just what we thought. It split the difference between the two and the goal line. Now it's first and goal. And frankly, if I'm Texas, I'd like to line up and mash it into the end zone. Yes. As opposed to throwing it. Yes, it counts the same. There's a mindset that goes with running over someone and feeling like you dominated them on that drive than there is to feel like, oh, okay, you had to throw to get it. Well, they're going to line up in the eye, Charles, just what you thought. Luke Tiemann, number 49, is the lead back. Selvin Young's behind him. Nope. If we have movement, now this changes everything if it's against Texas. Offside defense ah. with contact. Half the distance to the goal, first down. Now you mash it, Charles, don't you? Well, they were going to mash it anyway. Yeah. Now you definitely mash it. Yeah, they're into the neutral zone before the ball snapped. Defensive yeah. line. But this is what Luke Tiemann is on the field for, number 49, to be the lead blocker. That's him, the fullback. Young is in the eye. McCoy lost the handle of the football. He'll be fortunate if he retained it, because right now there's a lot of scrambling going on in that pile. The guy who had it first may not end up with it last. Yeah, it's got a scrum down there. Oh, Texas got it. Well, well, he's breathing a big old sigh of relief, isn't he? When you run from the gun predominantly, sometimes these things happen when you go under center. Good point. Because you don't have the same timing that you've worked on. Well, that, look how high that snap went, though, Charles. Well, Lyle Senline, listen, you know how much emotion is pumping through Lyle Senline right now? Yeah. Because he knows the guy's about a, a, a half inch away from his nose. He's got to snap it and get into his block. He tries to get it back there as quickly as he can. His fifth rushing touchdown of the year, and Texas pulls now within four. Watch the surge up front. Texas Tech does a decent job with it. There's team in number 49 blocking on Darcel McBath, number seven, the free safety. And Selvin Young, as you called it, partner, up and over the top for six points for the Horns. And Colt McCoy, nice drive put together by that young man again. 7.51 to play in the third. Ryan Bailey's been perfect on the extra points tonight. And that one splits the uprights. 7.51 to play in the third. It's a four-point, three-point Texas Tech lead. Football temperature today was in the 70s, probably in the 60s right now. Capacity crowd, standing room only in Lubbock, Texas, and we've got a good one out of here. 31-28, Texas Tech leading the number five team. Shannon Woods from the goal line. Corralled as he gets up over the 15 to the 17 yard line. College football on TBS kick next week. We better get our rest. Worst, yeah, really. Worst field position for Tech to start a drive. No three and outs yet. Pass caught. Kicks. Close to the 24 yard line. Pick up about six out of the play. How about that though? No three and outs, Charles, for Texas Tech. That's amazing considering Texas's forte, besides creating turnovers, is forcing three and outs. I mean, look at what they've done for the season. 46% of the time they do that. Tonight, zero for eight. Craig Sager observed that from the sideline and passed that on to us. Great observation, Sags. We'll call it second and three. Pressure coming from the middle. Harold throws it away. Well, he's a quick study, isn't he? Yes. He goes, I got to get this one past the line of He learned, didn't he? Yes. As part of a sophomore quarterback's maturation. Bobino's the one that put the pressure on him, coming from that middle linebacker spot. Mike Leach using the hand signals as he usually does. Texas has four defensive ends. But I take that back. Three defensive ends on the field right now with Roy Miller 
a normal tackle, trying to rush the passer here against Graham Harrell. Third down. And three. Showing like they're coming. You see the Texas Tech they're line coming. Point out. Here they come. Harrell reads it, throws it. First down, Texas Tech over the 30 to the 32 yard line. Robert Johnson. No three and out again. And how similar was that play to the one that Texas forced the fumble against Terrence Nunn from Nebraska last week, remember? Mm -hmm. That's right. Because if Terrence Nunn holds on to that ball, Texas more than likely loses that game. They're out of timeouts, and Nebraska can run out the clock, but Ross forced the fumble. This time, Johnson catches it, absorbs the hit, and keeps the ball. Todd Walker goes wide to the left for a set of downs for Texas Tech. Lonnie in motion. Got it. Looks to the outside, has the stiff arm up, continuing to press. Does a great job of picking up a couple of yards. Close to the 40-yard line, almost an eight-yard pickup. That was pure effort. Our first and ten line is brought to you by Napa. And they're going to need about two and a half, three for that. Wide receiver sweep. They ran that a couple times last week at Iowa State. Joel Falani ran for a total of 12 yards on two carries, but what effort he showed on that run. Second and three. Pass intended for Falani. Now the last third down call that we saw was the completion to Johnson. Mm -hmm. Texas blitzed on that play. Ordinarily, Gene Chizik and Dwayne Aquina don't blitz very much in this type of a situation. They usually get to, their break point is around third and seven or more. They'll come with pressure. This time it looks like they're showing four and going to play coverage. Here they come, they go four. Harold pump fakes, throws outside, incomplete. Shouldn't be a flag because the pass was not catchable. And that's exactly what the side judge, I believe, was motioning. He immediately went with the signal, hand over his head, saying ball's not catchable, no penalty to be called. See, what Mike Leach would say is, well, how do we know? Yeah, that's right, that's right. How do you know it's <laughs> How do you know? Because he didn't have a chance to catch it. He'd have to have some serious hops to catch that. He would, but it's a tough, it's a tough call because yeah. if you're knocking a guy out of the way, of course he can't catch the ball. But the official was very definite about what he saw and signaled it right away, yep. which is all you can ask for, was conviction in the call, and I think that he did that very well. Alex Reyes has had a good job putting the ball tonight, 42-yard average. Nope, whistled before he kicks it away. A delay of game, a little too much time yeah. maybe. Delay of game. Offense, five yards, fourth down. He's <laughs> back it up a little bit. It's only his second punt of the game, isn't it? This is third coming this up. This is third? Yeah. Might have had to wake him up over there. So you got to go out there and punt. You haven't had to do it much tonight. He's used to the offense moving it downfield. You know, I talked to uh, Alex yesterday. We saw him uh, around the locker room, had a chance to spend some time. And this is a, this is a big young That's man. That's a well-built young man. Well-built guy who's going to play in the NFL, I'm sure. Said he shortened his steps, holds the ball a little bit longer than he had in the past. He wants to give his gunners a chance to get down there. He's not as big as that young man I saw from Virginia Tech the other night. Oh you see the size of him as a punter? That's another big man. Where's Lou Groza? When you need him, I know Lou Groza was a kicker and a former offensive tackle. Look how high this one goes for Reyes. Ross at the 32, signals the fair catch, and that's for Texas. We'll get it 33 yards on the kick. Texas has the football trailing by three. AT&T Stadium, over 52,000 on hand. Texas Tech, two and one at home this year. Their only loss to Missouri snapped an 11-game home win streak. And right now, they lead the number five team in the country, 31-28, along with Craig Sager, Charles Davis, I'm Ron Thulin. Glad you're with us tonight. College football presented by Orbitz here on TBS. First and 10 for the Longhorns on their own 31-yard line. From the eye formation, straight ahead, smash mouth, running the football with Selvin Young. Well, fans, now it's time for our half-lap trivia question. And the question is, who holds the NCAA record for career punt return yards? We'll have the answer coming up in just a couple of minutes. And I we think he may be here tonight. I think he's here in attendance tonight. 
That was Jamal Charles, by the way, on the last carry. And he's having a very successful pro career, we can say. That's our guess. Second down and two. Still on the ground, close to the 45-yard line. Jamal Charles got the first down here. Craig Singer on the sidelines. Well, I remember that first half after Colt McCoy threw the interception that made it 21-0 in favor of Texas Tech. We saw Mac Brown call him over the sidelines and talk to him. I asked him what he said. He goes, I said, Colt, you're trying too hard. I knew you grew up here, here, your friends, your family are here, but you're putting too much pressure on yourself. You play for Texas. We have fun. We have tradition. Go out and enjoy the moment. I love it. His girlfriend actually goes to Texas Tech. She brought her whole family to the game. They're at our hotel. Yeah, grandma and grandpa at the hotel, weren't they? Selvin Young's got some more. Jamal Charles running room over the 35, down to the 34 and a half yard line. An explosion run as, as defined by Texas. And he run 12 yards or more. An explosion pass, explosive pass, 16 yards or more. But what formation did it come from? The I formation. And I know that Greg Davis knows a heck of a lot more football than I do as an offensive coordinator, but the mindset of his team, they like to run it downhill, a 20-yard run by Jamal Charles. Well, they want nine explosion plays a game. There's one of them, four minutes to play in the third. Texas now just grinding it out. Selvin Young gets the call. Let's go back to the first half. Our observation mm -hmm. was that sideways runs helps Texas Tech's defense because they're allowed to flow to the ball. You're not really getting hammered out of the way. This half, we've seen a lot more eye formation, and I've seen bigger holes chopped in the front. I think the Texas Tech offensive line loves the mindset of running out of the eye. I think they do, too. Well, it allows them to line side. up and mash, and they feel better that way. Cosby wide to the left, wide to the right, sweet wide to the left. Little play action, looking for Cosby. <laughs> The 21-yard, no, incomplete, they're saying, at the 21-yard line. Tough throw. Decent coverage on the play. There's Antonio Huffman helping break it up. His brother, Antoine Huffman, was a starter at Kentucky. Led them in pass. Passes broken up during his career there for the, with the Wildcats. Antoine's even here. Twin brother. Twin brother. These are two kids that know what community service means. Both of them very active at their respective schools. Third down and seven now for Texas at the 32. He's throwing it here to be off of play action, I would think, with the tailback. And that would be Selvin Young. No, he's got it. Up to the 25-yard line. Close. That'll be right at the first down Napa line. That'll be very close. And right now, Mac Brown and Greg Davis are talking to each other. Are we going up if it's, if it's fourth down? And if so, what do we want to run? That's the communication that's occurring with them right now. Uh, they're saying it's a first down. But that's how you have to think and communicate. Mm -hmm. You have to have all that covered. Okay, no problem. We've got the first down. What are we going to now? We told you that Texas Tech statistically does not score in the third quarter a whole lot. And that could cost them. But here's your opportunity to run play action and try and strike right now if, so, if you so choose. And we've got a whistle. We're going to have a timeout call. This play is under review. Oh, my goodness gracious. The only thing they can be reviewing is the spot. Do you think, we don't want editorial, no. but we will. But do you think <laughs> that this will make referees hesitant and gun shy to make calls now? Will make? It's already happening. And it's, and it's too bad from my perspective, because I think the people who do these jobs are top notch and do a great job. Absolutely. I think they've always done a terrific job. Are they going to miss some calls? You and I both know one thing. We miss calls up here, and we have perspective and replays. Yeah. And we're asking them to make split second decisions all the time. We have to let them do that a little bit more. I'm not saying dump replay, that's not what I'm saying but we make it very difficult on these guys on the field. I think we make it almost too hard for them because I think they do a good job. You don't want to get to the point where everything is replay. You they, know, did, they, he, did he put his knee down at the 25 or 23? I mean, you know, you're, you're talking a four-hour game then. You're asking too much. 
there's a flow that has to occur yeah. well, during a game. Yeah, and technically everything is supposed to be replayed. Yeah, technically it is. Do but it quicker then. If you're going to do it, do it quicker. But these three-minute breaks we're getting here now. It's tough. This is tough. It's, tough. it's not fair to Mike Leach and Mac Brown squads. No, it's, this is tough. You operate with the premise everyone's trying to do the best that they possibly can. I think there'll be a lot of discussion about how they can do it better and allow these, these gentlemen who operate the game on the field to really feel like they're still in control on the field. Well, we have time, so let's take a look at our New York Life stat of the night. And that stat is about rushing yards by half. Texas Tech is perfect. Zero in the first half, zero in the second half. New York Life has been protecting families for over 160 years. Now that's a winning stat. And they're still looking at it. How long are they supposed to take? All right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, seriously, I mean, was it a minute and a half? I thought, I, I, I thought, I thought, I thought it was 90 seconds. Player's knee is ruled down. The ball is short of the 25-yard line. Fourth down. But see, that changes everything for you. You oh, think absolutely. you've got a first down. Now you've got to go back and, and, and recalibrate what you're going to call. It's a key fourth down for you now. Defensively, you've got to gear up and think a little bit differently. This is where you're going to see studies and poise from both sidelines. They have a lot to handle right here on this call. Now that ever the gentleman, Mac just keeps on coaching. Now that's, down and one. that's what you have to do. Now earlier today, I saw Oklahoma on a fourth and short take a shot downfield. Yes. Didn't work. I'm not sure they do that here. I'm thinking that they're going to run the ball and get this first, try to get this first down. Well, they've got Charles in the backfield, but Colt McCoy just puts the head down. That should be good. Well, the one official is running they over. Because they don't review it. <laughs> Somebody pulled the plug on that machine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's first down the line, but you can see where our Napa first and ten line is. I thought he had plenty of surge on that oh, yeah, play to get the first down. Listen, the Napa, the Napa line never lies. No, Napa's good. Good surge up front because all you're doing is burrowing. See that? That's the center. Wow, center line. See the progress he made. All Colt McCoy had to do was just follow his center, and he had the first down. New set of downs inside of 235 to play in the third. Look for play action here. Looking to run. The ball is pitched. It's loose on the ground. Jamal Charles covers it up back at the 34-yard line. I thought with that field position, before the field really condensed on them, they might take a shot at the end zone. They try to run option, which is what Colt McCoy runs better than the zone read that Vince Young used to run. Remember out of the shotguns where you can fake it inside and then keep it or, or, or give it off to the, full, the running back? This time they come down, come down the line option. They disrupt McCoy and force the ball on the ground. Good job by Jamal Charles getting on it. Second down and 19 inside of two minutes to play in the third. Running, balls loose again, and Texas Tech has it at the 25-yard line. Selvin Young coughed it up. Well, there's turnover. You said they needed four. Now yes. they've got two. I think they're halfway home to my number. Let's see if he actually had full possession. Yes, yes, and he ends up bumping into his offensive oh, lineman as he's trying to put the ball in his left arm. And that knocked it free. Probably still needed two hands as he got through the line of scrimmage. Well, See the could, turnover story there? Mm -hmm. Remember last year, he had a little fumble problems also. Calvin Young did. Well, sudden change. Texas defense knows they have to go on the field and try and put out the fire. Texas Tech would love to get untrapped again on offense. Eight fumbles.